Welcome to week three's first video. This video addresses core principles of assessment. Specifically, we will address the items you see before you on the screen. Before we begin, take a moment to consider these following questions. You might want to pause after each one. What is a principle? Well, based on the Merriam-Webster definition, a principle is a moral rule or belief or a basic truth or a law or fact. Now, I would argue that these next items shared may not really reflect this definition. However, it is used in a way that does reflect the underlying fundamental ideas that ground or guide or support your actions. We will look at the principles in this manner, ideas that ground us and help us navigate decision-making regarding assessment. So let's take a look at how sound assessment is described. The American Association for Higher Education, the Center for the Study of Higher Education in Australia, and Volante, a researcher here in Canada, put forth some principles for consideration with respect to assessment. This week, you will go to each of the websites and compare and contrast the core principles of each. We will begin with the CSHE, the Center for the Study of Higher Education in Australia. These are three guiding objectives for assessment in higher education. From these three objectives, 16 guidelines emerged and are located at... So rather than read all 16 items to you, Please go to the URL you see on your screen. This is also available on week three of the course website. Once you are finished reading the 16 indicators, come back, finish viewing the rest of the video, and as you go through the items, what key indicators reflect what you already know about assessment? See you in a bit. Now that you've read the 16 indicators from the CSHE, consider what the indicators on your screen have in common. Please pause to consider. Hopefully, you concluded that the indicators before you reflect the various purposes of assessment. As we've discussed up to this point, formative assessment refers to ongoing feedback so that the students and instructors can use the feedback for learning purposes. The students could use the information to further construct or clarify their understandings, and the instructor can use the information to adjust the learning experiences as needed. Now pause to consider these three indicators of effective assessment in higher education. What common element do these share? Hopefully you concluded that the indicators before you reflect the interconnectedness of the planning, instructional, and assessment process. The next video will address this more deeply. However, key to these points is the notion that assessment should not be an afterthought to instruction, but rather considered alongside the learning objectives. Lastly, what does this grouping of indicators reflect? Again, please pause to consider. If you came up with the notion of fairness, then you are on the right track. We will discuss the notion of fair and dependable assessments in future weeks. Now we will look at the principles of sound assessment as put forth by the AAHE, the American Association for Higher Education. Once again, rather than read all nine guiding principles, please go to the URL you see on your screen. This is also available on week three of the course website. Once you are finished reading the nine indicators, come back, finish viewing the rest of the video, and as you go through the items, consider if they too reflect formative and summative assessment, the alignment of planning, instruction, and assessment, and fairness, trustworthiness, or authenticity. Come on back when you are done. In addition, are there other themes that emerged as you compare with the CSHE principles? We will discuss during the tutorial. Take a look at the following principles. Which of the three areas might these represent and why? Take a moment to pause and reflect. There are multiple ways of categorizing. However, in this instance, these were categorized into 
formative and summative assessment. The notion that assessment is more than just a grade. Assessment is a process, and the purpose of gathering evidence of student learning is to improve student learning. Consider how these might reflect these ideas. What might these principles reflect? Well, again, there could be multiple classifications. Pause for a moment to reflect. These principles demonstrate that assessment is not an isolated activity, but rather it begins with larger goals and is integrated with instruction. Lastly, take a look at all of the principles once again. How or why do these principles promote assessment that is fair? How do these principles enhance valid and reliable assessments? Again, we will discuss during the tutorial and in future classes. Let's now take a look at Volante's work. These principles came from Louis Volante's work. They were intended for the K-12 population. However, might they be applied to adult learning and digital contexts? How and why? Take a moment to pause the video to ponder this and to consider if these two reflect the notions of formative and summative assessment, alignment of planning, instruction, and assessment, and the notion of fairness, trustworthiness, and authenticity. At the beginning of the video, you were asked to consider the following questions. How might you respond to these questions now? After viewing this video, consider now the following two questions. We will discuss during the tutorial. First, you are going to identify challenges you have experienced either as a student or instructor and consider why the challenges you identified were indeed challenges. Now consider the core principles of assessment. How does the challenge or perhaps multiple challenges relate to the core principles of assessment? I will provide a simplistic example. I hope your examples are more complex. One challenge I identified was the level of stress I faced alongside my colleagues during my undergraduate work. One of my courses only had a final exam as its form of assessment. I know many students who did not do any reading until the week before the final exam. They may have scored well after cramming. However, did they really learn the material as deeply as they probably could have? Hard to say, but more than likely, the answer would be no. I'm sure that if we had to identify core principles not reflected by this practice of a 100% exam as the only form of assessment, we might be able to identify several. However, one principle that immediately comes to mind is the notion that assessment works best when it is ongoing, not episodic. If the instructor was guided by this principle, then perhaps he might have included ongoing assessment throughout the course rather than at the end of the 12 weeks. Students would have perhaps been more motivated to read and complete tasks. The instructor could have seen areas that students needed to continue to improve upon and perhaps adjust instruction to enhance the learning process. However, it appeared the instructor was not grounded in the principle of ongoing assessment and assessment occurred in one episode, the final exam worth 100%. The level of stress and test anxiety felt by many of the students was quite high, perhaps preventing students from providing more accurate evidence of their learning. What is your example of an assessment challenge you faced? Make it complex. So to conclude, this video examined the following items on the screen. We'll discuss the questions during the tutorial. Thanks for watching.